right, today I have a Mamie, a couple actually, and these ones can get quite big. I've been wanting to try these for a while, and I got a pair of them uh, a few weeks ago, but then by the time I got around to them, they weren't good anymore. So we're trying this again. <laughs> so these are native to um, Mexico and Central America and have been growing wild since ancient times. So an interesting bit about these is fruits were used as culinary and medicinal ingredients in early Mayan and Aztec civilizations and are one of the few fruits that are considered part of the pre-Hispanic era that is still widely consumed in the modern day. Many different varieties of Mami Sapote have been created over time and the fruit trees have also become naturalized throughout South America and the Caribbean. Legend has it that the fruits were the primary source of sustenance for Hernan Cortez and his army in 1519 as they were traveling over 700 miles from Mexico City to Honduras. Mami Sapote was also introduced into Florida in 1887, believed to have been brought from Cuba. Today, Mami Sapote is cultivated and growing wild throughout Mexico, Central and South America, and the Caribbean. Fruits are also produced on a small scale in Australia, Florida, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines, and are sold fresh throughout through local vendors. The flesh of the fruit is also often frozen and sold through specialty grocers and Hispanic markets worldwide. Which is where I found these, at the little Mexican mart down the street where I get all of my fruit these days. Because <laughs> they have varieties that I can't find anywhere else. And it is much more interesting than normal grocery stores. So if it sounded like I was reading a lot, I was because this is interesting background and I wanted to pass it along. Uh, I'm going to have links to this, these resources. So if my rendition wasn't good enough, uh, or if you wanted to learn more, um, you can do some of this research yourself. But as for the flavor profiles, these are supposed to have, um, apricot notes a touch of sweet potato and persimmon and a little hint of nuts and spices. So it sounds like it's right up my alley. Um, the one that I tried previously that had gone bad, I could tell obviously that it was bad, <laughs> but um, the angles that I was able to glean from it seemed like I was going to like it but it just wasn't good anymore. So we're gonna try this again. So let me get out my knife and I will cut into this bad boy. And I have read that these are ready when they are um, soft to the touch. They should not be rock hard. So this, and it does have one to two rather large seeds, which you're not supposed to eat because of the cyanide content, which, you know, a lot of seeds are like that. I'm trying not to cut the seeds because I want to experiment with planting them. Uh, I planted the seeds from the previous pair of fruit that I bought. Uh, they haven't broke the surface yet, but I am sure that they will because they were sprouting inside the fruit. <laughs> Ooh, wow, this smells amazing. Wow, okay, this is going to be good. <laughs> I'm glad I'm giving this another try. Wow. 
Wow, okay. I, for I neglected to bring a spoon. I'm gonna do this with the knife. I carved myself out a piece here. First, let me show you the inside. I'm doing this out of order. So here's the big old seed. And then there's the interior. I got distracted by the smell, so I'm gonna go for that taste test now. That is quite good. Um, it is, it is giving me like persimmon and sweet potato vibes. That's very good. I feel like, I feel like I've had something with this flavor before. You know what? It reminds me of um, like marzipan, like almond flavoring. That's what it's reminding me of. It's like screaming that flavor. <laughs> it's very good because I, I really like almond flavored stuff. Um, so on the wiki page for Mamie, it says that they are often used in foods like milkshakes and ice creams. And I can tell that this would be great for that. This is really good. So, um, I mentioned that, you know, having not had this before, I can tell you, uh, where I went wrong trying to ripen this. So I read that it was supposed to be soft to the touch, similar to an avocado, um, but I let it ripen for too long to get soft. And this time I just ripened it a little bit in the fridge and didn't let it get as soft as the first time. <laughs> so I'm obviously a newcomer to this fruit. Uh, and I'm glad I did it that way. It is quite delicious, you guys. If you haven't tried these, I am ready to wholeheartedly recommend it. <laughs> they are a bit pricey. Um, I want to say it was like $10 a pound. Which was kind of ridiculous, but now that I've had it, I'm leaning towards it being worth it. Um, I'm sure that it's nowhere near that cost where you can buy it locally, <laughs> but. Obviously having it imported from Mexico and sold here in the States, it's way expensive. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to, um, so this, I had these chilling in the fridge and I was going to do this when they were still cold, but it got warm. Uh, next time I have these, I think I'm going to chill them prior because that'll probably be really refreshing and delicious. Uh, now that I've gotten some of this flavor for real this time, it really seems like it's gonna pair well with being chilled, especially if this is used in, um, you know, milkshakes and ice creams like the wiki page says. I can add a little more background here instead of just talking about how much I like it. <laughs> so for nutrition, um, Mamie Sapote is supposed to be an excellent source of fiber. And uh, 
vitamin C for the immune system. Fruits are a good source of potassium. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so if you don't like bananas, you can have these. <laughs> vitamin E, magnesium, copper, iron, phosphorus, and riboflavin. So it's got a laundry list of vitamins and minerals. So other uses are in fruit salads, which I could see being amazing. And then we talked about uh, their uses as, as chilled fruit. So it can be used in frozen fruit uh, applications. Oh, and this is saying that they're uh, uh, beyond beverages, the fruits can be cooked into glazes, sauces, jams, and marmalades and flavoring which makes sense because it reminded me of almond flavoring. Oh, another important note is this is not the only fruit that's referred to as Mamie. There is, uh, so the, the scientific name for this one is, I'm gonna butcher this, Coturia sapota. This is the Mamie sapote. And there's another fruit that has is commonly referred to by the name Mamie, and that is the um, Mamia Americana. Did better on that one. And um, more common names for that one are uh, Mamie Apple or Santa Domingo Apricot or Tropical Apricot, South American Apricot. Mamie Apple is the one that I hear the most. So if you're seeing something else referred to as a Mamie, that's why, because of, you know, names being used interchangeably for fruit. Very common. <laughs> so let me pull out this big honking seed so you guys can see it. There we go. These suckers are really big. And it looks like... I think it might have germinated because it looks like it's cracking right here. And it's... I think it's got something going on at the top. Like I said earlier, the, um, the ones, the seeds in the fruit that had gone bad for my first try at this they had sprouted inside the fruit. Um, that was interesting. So I'll save this one too and try and grow it and we will see what happens. I have a greenhouse that I'm putting all my tropicals in and they do much better there <laughs> than when I tried it without the greenhouse. Anyway, I'm rambling like I do in these videos. Uh, the point is, these are really good. <laughs> uh, and if you have the opportunity to try one, I do recommend it. But I'll quit rambling and end the video here. And I'll see you guys in the next one.